the, let's see, yep, you're alive, good, okay. So Colin, let's boom down and take a closer look at this environment. So to create a really immersive game experience, the characters and environments have to work together harmoniously. We can't just drop believable characters into a less than convincing world. So we need to start with authentic and densely detailed environments as the setting to our story. And look, because part of our story is set in 1940s occupied Paris, we needed the word world to have a really believable and visceral level of detail and grit, as you can see here. So Roman, why don't we focus on the ground here for a bit? Now look at that. That's an amazing amount of detail. It would have been nearly impossible to get something this complex to run in real time without the new features in 5.4. So, Kim, let's talk about some of the levels of detail that we're seeing here. Sure. So, we're talking about Nanite's new adaptive tessellation feature. So, whilst Nanite lets you create environments like you're seeing here of incredible detail, the memory requirements can become impractical to realize for such a level of complexity across a huge level without the need for lots of instancing. And we thought that was a challenge, and we wanted to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, so Colin, let's actually strip this scene right down to the dirt so folks can see what we're talking about. So see how simple this is relatively simple ground plane. Actually, let's, um, let's show the triangles so you can actually see what's there. Just a few hundred triangles. Let's pop it back to the beauty render view. Um, but with this new dynamic tessellation capability, we can actually displace that simple geometry and create new three-dimensional geometry of the quality that you're used to with Nanite. With nothing more than layering tile textures and using shader logic, you can make incredibly complex effects. So instead of me trying to explain it, let's get Colin to show the magic, and uh, let's see a transformation of this face. This technique allows you to see an unprecedented level of geometric detail but it's also memory efficient and can be changed dynamically in the runtime of your game. So things like footprints or tire tracks or even supernatural <laughs> effects, if you such want, so would want them, can be visualized. And just to show how this ge simple geometry has now been transformed, let's have a look at the triangle view again. There you go. What you expect from Nanite. So it's a really, really smart, interesting technique to actually get details in the, into the games without crazy, crazy amounts of geometry. Let's switch it back to the uh, detail view. Thank you. Um, and of course, as you can imagine, this technology isn't just useful for the ground and for the ground terrain. It applies to every detail in the environment. So let's fly over to that pile of objects on the left over there, for example. And Colin, while we do, can you kill those headlights for me? Cool. Thank, thank you. OK, so imagine our challenge. We're trying to authentically recreate a harsh winter in occupied Paris. That means every prop, Every object, every detail, every rooftop needs to be realistically blanketed in snow. So now let's show how we can dial up the snow accumulation on these objects, right? And of course, we can dial it back as desired. It's making me feel chilly, actually. Yeah, actually, it's a little cold up here. Or maybe she's um, nervous. Uh, <laughs> and remember, of course, like Kim said, thanks to this technology, this is all actual geometry. So you can see how tools like these would really imp Yeah, that's the one there. And let's turn on a light to really illuminate the smoke coming out of the barrel. Thank you. Look at that. That's amazing. We could have never achieved effects this realistic in the past. So this is what we call a heterogeneous volumes. In the past, effects like these would be done with particle sprites. But that's kind of a cheat that often breaks down and can look flat. It's nice from afar, but far from nice, as we say <laughs> back in the UK. Um, so if we look at the glow of the fire on, as it dynamically illuminates the volumetric smoke, you can see that, that light transmitting through the volume. You can also see that the smoke itself is casting shadows onto the world, but also itself. These volumetrics can also mix with more traditional effects as well. So if you do want to put particles in there, fog, or even cards, you can do it. All, all of this is just to help us tell our story, right? And the story is nothing without great characters. So, Let's head back over to the bridge and catch up with Cap. Now, an essential part of any character's persona, particularly a Marvel hero, is their look. And it can be really distracting if the outfit doesn't look as realistic and believable as the rest of the world. So you can see Cap's leather uniform fits just like you would expect in real life with all the correct material properties and the complexity of creases forming as he moves. From a technical perspective, this is where we can effectively utilize machine learning. We can set up and run complex simulations in a package like Houdini. America's hero, dancing around in red, white, and blue underwear. 
That shield that you hide behind does not belong to you. You are unworthy of it. Right, and as he pauses here, Roman, why don't you go in really close and really show everybody the detail that we have in these models. Um, it's, it's insane, right? It's like, amazing. Uh, it's essential for us to retain every nuance of the outstanding performance that our actor, Kari Payton, brought to Azuri's character. What you just saw there were untouched metahuman animator solves. Mm -hmm. So working with the metahuman process, we've been able to honor our amazing actors' performances and faithfully transform them into equally powerful... That's far enough! I'm here on the business of the United States government. Yours is not the only business here. Stay out of my way. Stand aside. I do not take orders from anyone. Turn around, boy. Go home. Look, pal, I don't know who you are. But I know who you are. Captain. America's hero. Dancing around in red, white, and blue underwear. Says the man dressed like an overgrown house cat. That shield! that you hide behind does not belong to you. You are unworthy of it. I don't have time for this. Neither do I. Combing the streets. Searching house to house. If they arrest you two, they will take you to their headquarters and you will not return. I'm more concerned with a six foot cat man who's got claws that can cut through vibranium alloy. By my count, that makes two super soldiers loose in Paris. Three. Counting you. And that's two too many. I'll be there before the sun rises. Before the Germans, before that American. The Eye of Force has been found. Please, just stick to the rooftops. Be careful. Stand by me. When am I not? It's better if I tackle this one alone. You may encounter some obstacles. That won't be a problem. Our cat friend is definitely here too. By the look of things, he's not very far ahead. The American boy is right on your heels. Who the hell are you? If you wanted us dead, we'd be dead. So what do you want? Answers. That's far enough! Stay out of my way! Stand aside! I do not take orders from anyone! I don't have time for this. Neither do I. 